Hi, student, and welcome to the mini lecture, Understanding the Final Examination. I'm really glad that you're watching this because the final exam is uh, getting to be close. Everything that we see in here is in the study guide that's available um, in this week's material for the course site, on the course site. First of all, uh, the final examination is worth 20% of your grade, and it consists of the following. 20 multiple choice items for two points each, 10 true false items at two points each, one matching item for 10 points overall, four short answer items where you construct a response for five points each, and this will just be, each one will just be a few sentences, and then a longer essay item, 10 points each. There will be one extra credit item up to 10 points extra. Um, and I may or may not give that extra credit item out in advance. I haven't decided. How to take the exam? Well, on the Blackboard course site, you're going to log in, and it'll be in the Assignments folder uh, as of December 16th, and you have five days until Friday, December 21st. I will not accept late examinations because uh, I won't have time to get it graded before grades are due. Go to the Assignments folder, as you have been doing on the main page, and you'll see the Exam folder, and you'll see the link as well as the study guide in there. This is an important consideration. You only have two hours to take the exam, and you must take it in one setting. You can't shut it down and then go back. It'll submit it, and then uh, you won't uh, be able to retake it. So it's very important to do it and do it in one sitting. So clear off, you know, a couple of hours where you could be quiet and focus. Now here's the good news. You may use your text, notes, lecture, PowerPoint materials, anything you want. There's only one rule. You may not work with another person. So you have to do this on your own. You may not share questions with another person. You may not do any of that. So how should you prepare for the exam? Well, the best way is I've given you some specific topics to focus on uh, that we're going to talk about in a minute. Uh, Reread the summaries at the end of each chapter in your text. View the PowerPoints or the lectures. Uh, go back to the bullets and see how many you can do that we're getting to. You can even prepare notes to help you while you're looking at the bullets to help you take the exam. Uh, why am I allowing this to be open book? Well, because I'm constructing questions that ask you to apply knowledge, um, so don't concentrate on memorizing information. Try to understand the information. So instead of saying, for example, a typical question might ask, discuss how might you might use performance assessment in the classroom. So instead of saying performance assessment is which of the following and then giving four definitions, which you could easily look up, you really have to have an in-depth knowledge of what performance assessment is and, and how you would use it in the classroom. Do not make the mistake of thinking that because the exam is open book, you will not need to prepare. Uh, you'll need an understanding of specific content in order to finish the exam on time and do well. So if you have to if you don't prepare and you spend your time looking what up everything is up, you're not going to have enough time probably to finish. You're going to, you're going to be confused and then first learning the material. So just prepare ahead of time and you should be fine. This exam, like all good assessment, focuses on the course learning objectives and the syllabus. And it will only cover the chapters and the timetable that from your text that are in the course syllabus. So if we didn't read it, if it's not in your syllabus, it won't be on the exam. It's covered a great deal of material, so I've given you a bulleted list that we're about to get to, and so just work your way through that bulleted list, and you'll be on the way to a good grade. Here's some of the, the start of the bulleted list. Define the terms measurement, test, assessment, and evaluation. So you need to go back and see what are the similarities and differences between those terms and be able to understand them and demonstrate knowledge. And identify components of validity, reliability, and state why they are important to assessment. Identify ways that assessments are not valid and are reliable and why that can create false impressions about students' learning. 
Define data-driven decision-making and explain its use in the classroom. This refers to the idea that we always want to base our instructional decisions on data. And so, for example, this week you're learning about grading and reporting and how to see how well students scored on each particular objective. That's an important data-driven um, technique for, that teachers use. You need to be able to write a specific and measurable learning objective, and I'll add learning target, knowing the difference between the two. Obviously, you need to understand and explain the differences between formative, summative, standardized, portfolio, and performance assessments, and describe when you might use each. Describe how to use formative assessment to develop a plan of action for reteaching one or more learning objectives. So this involves um, knowing what types of formative assessment you might use, um, questioning, homework, exit strategies, and how you might use the data collected from that formative assessment to, um, to know who to reteach and how to reteach that. Explain when it's appropriate to use each of the following types of items, multiple choice, true, false, matching, fill in the blank, short answer, essay. This gets back to your rationale for your quiz project. Identify advantages and disadvantages uh, of each type of item. Understand, and you can look at the tip sheet, uh, specific best practices in constructing test or quiz items. Identify and apply components of good feedback. This is where we talked about not saying, just saying good job, but giving specific feedback. Identify purposes of grading and reporting. List and apply the steps for steward, student referral for specialized services. So this is the idea of um, pre-referral and then diagnostic and, and um, all, the, all the specialized services covered under IDEA. Identify major legal decisions that led to rights for students receiving specialized services. So this was uh, the whole differentiated assessment module where we talked about IDEA and some of the other laws, what that led to, IEPs, and testing accommodations and specialized assessment. Need to be able to construct a rubric, holistic and analytic. You need to be able to identify reasons that students from disadvantaged backgrounds or ELL students might struggle with assessments and describe strategies to help them. And you need to understand and explain why students' final assessment results remain confidential, but how also how they need to be shared with certain individuals, for example, parents, school officials. We talked about in this, with that in this week's lecture. Explain the difference between normative and criterion-based assessment and then how each should be used. So that's in this week's lecture. Describe when and how it is appropriate to differentiate assessment in the classroom. Use a rationale based on learning objectives to combine and weight grades from different assignments to come up with one overall report card grade. That's the worksheet in this week's module. Interpret standardized test scores and be able to discuss pros and cons of standardized testing. That's next week's assignment, so that will make a little more sense after you do next week's learning module. So if you can do these things, you should be fine on the final examination. I do encourage you to prepare, but also not to freak out because I'm giving you a very thorough study guide. And if you have any questions about how to go forward, uh, please feel free to ask me. If you have a documented accommodation, for example, for extended time that you've presented to me, I will honor that uh, by giving you additional time. Um, I have those records and will be contacting you directly. If there is someone who's not submitted that and they have something from the Office of Accessibility, please let me know. And again, any questions, feel free to ask.